Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin went on the Sunday shows and shoved his foot directly in his mouth while discussing unemployment benefits. Absolutely agree on enhanced unemployment. We want to fix the issue where in some cases people are overpaid and we want to make sure there's the right incentives. But again, let me just emphasize, we put on the table a proposal. Let's extend it for one week at the same rate while we negotiate so we don't hurt the American public. So, so you do think it is a disincentive to find a job if you have that extra $600? There's no question in certain cases where we're paying people more to work, stay home than to work, that's created issues in the entire economy. But let me just say, you have to I, look I, I at wanna, all I want to interrupt things. you there for just one second. You, uh, it's not all the evidence. A Yale study from this month refutes that, saying many economists who have studied the benefits said that so far they don't see any evidence in labor market data that the payments are affecting the rate at which people are returning to work during the pandemic. Well, let me just say I went to Yale. I, I agree I know on that. certain things. I don't always agree. There's a Chicago study that goes through all the people that are overpaid. But, but let's just face it, we know factually, okay, there are cases where people are overpaid. This country is going to absolutely implode. This country is going to implode. They do not understand. Steve Mnuchin is a Goldman Sachs guy. He's been wealthy his whole life. He's now the Treasury Secretary. He does not understand what's coming. Neither does Trump who today was bragging about the NASDAQ on Twitter. And it's not just the Republicans, just so everybody understands. It's the Democrats as well. They don't know. You think Nancy Pelosi fully understands what's coming? They don't know what's coming. On the Sunday shows, they're arguing about the $600 extra unemployment benefit, and the focus is, I mean, so people are overpaid. What do you want me to tell you? They're overpaid. We got to do something to fix that. You're talking about... People being overpaid with a $600 unemployment benefit at a time when you have 32% of the country couldn't make their July housing payment. You have some states, guys, where it's over 50%. West Virginia, it was 59% could not pay their rent. Tennessee, 55%. Even the low state is like Vermont and it's 22%, meaning a quarter of renters in Vermont are facing eviction. So the economy is absolutely imploding. We have 20% real unemployment. A lot of the people who still have jobs took 20 or 25% pay cuts. And they're stuck on the fact that a handful of people got more money in unemployment benefits than they did from their terrible jobs. Let me tell you something. These people beforehand in their jobs were not making a living wage. They were working full time and not making enough money to survive. So you know what I say to them? If they happen to get a little bit extra money temporarily because of a freaking pandemic, God bless, son. God bless. Are you kidding me? They're focused on that one little fact. Oh my God, there are some people who got a little bit more money, but that's going to stop us from forcing them to go back to their terrible dead-end job where they don't make enough money to survive. The horror! Oh, the horror! There's still a pandemic. I don't know if you've noticed. Have you noticed that there's still a pandemic? And you're trying to force people back to work. Force people back to work during a pandemic and we don't even have adequate protections all around this country. And this is framed as like, well, obviously this is, this is the main problem we're talking about. They're not even talking about the fact that within a couple months, you probably have 40 or 50% of the entire country's renters that are facing eviction. And they're stuck on the fact that a handful of people are getting $600 extra unemployment benefit per week. They have no idea what's coming, bro. They have no idea what's coming. People don't have savings, dog. Do you, how do you not get this? Okay, almost 80% of the country is living paycheck to paycheck. And you're bitching about a little bit extra in unemployment benefits that went to people who should have been making more previously. By the way, you want to solve that problem? Raise wages. They always go to the unemployment end of the equation and say, well, obviously we need to cut their benefits. Uh, no, you don't. You could raise wages so that people work a full-time job and make enough money to survive. No, they never look at that end of the equation. I love how it's grandfathered into everybody's understanding that obviously we have jobs where you can work a full-time and work full-time and still not make enough money to survive. As if we all agree that that's an okay state of affairs. I don't agree. I don't agree. 
And I think the fact that nobody else brings it up is freaking insane. Why am I the only one bringing that point up over and over? I don't understand it. Now, credit to Martha Raddatz there, who did say, well, we have a study and it shows that what you're saying is not really the dynamic that's happening. He's saying, oh, you're disincentivizing all these people from working. She's saying, no, there's a Yale study that says that's not true. That if anything's disincentivizing people from working, it's the pandemic and the fact that 150,000 Americans are dead and millions more are getting the virus. Maybe that's what's stopping people. Have you considered that? But then he goes back and cites the uh, Chicago study. Sh just for those of you who don't know, citing a Chicago study is like saying, I found a couple of Austrian economists and far right-wing economists who say that is what's going on. Well, of course you did, because these are people who already have their mind made up. They're not actually going to follow the empirical data. <laughs> They're working backwards from their conclusion, which is any government benefits are bad by definition. <laughs> so, but this shows you the mindset. This shows you the mindset of Steve Mnuchin, of Donald Trump. They're as elitist as it gets, man. But here's the main point. There's, if they keep going down this path, it's over, son. That, like, Donald Trump is going to lose in a historic landslide. Because you can't, in the middle of a pandemic and what is effectively a Great Depression, you can't willy-nilly, like, we're just... The benefits already expired, the unemployment benefits. And it, it's not like, you know, we got something that's taking its place or people will still be able to dip into their savings or whatever. No. The benefits are expiring. People can't pay their bills. 30 million Americans said, I didn't have enough to eat last week. 30 million. And now Steve Mnuchin is like, well, we haven't reached a deal yet. And then they left Washington, by the way. They all left Washington. Up oh, uh, summer vacation or something. They're gone. They left. It's like, it's almost like Steve Mnuchin is trying to lose the election. And Trump, he doesn't know what the hell's going on. Whoever walks in his office and talks to him last, whether it's the military industrial complex or Wall Street goons, he listens to them. I think that's great. I think you make a tremendous point. We're going to go in that direction with whatever you just said. Anyway, back to Fox News and tweeting. NASDAQ, all time high. He's, I mean, Biden doesn't have to say anything, doesn't have to do anything. If you cut off the last lifeline to the American people in the middle of a pandemic and a depression, you're going to lose. And you deserve to lose. And the amount of hurt that people are feeling now is incalculable. You, I literally cannot put it into words. They better get their, their ducks in a row because if they don't, again, I, I fear what's going to happen in this country. You cannot have this widespread poverty, this many people who can't afford to pay their bills, because, you know, at this point, it's beyond obvious that the problem is not we have some lazy people who are immoral and unethical and don't want to work hard. Even to your most hardcore, ardent, far-right winger who believes in the myth of American meritocracy, even they look at this state of affairs and go, well, that's obviously not the problem. The problem isn't that people are lazy or immoral or unethical or unethical. Did I say unethical? That's not a word. Unethical. The problem is that the economy imploded as a direct result of the pandemic. And now we have a depression. So since it's not their fault, the government can't just say, you're done, we're going to cut you off, and you're on your own. They can't do that. They can't do it. Especially when the American people see what happened with corporate America. They see the CARES Act. They see the $5 trillion that Steve, Steve Mnuchin handed out in welfare to giant corporations. They see that, so hold on. They get a bailout. The corporations get socialism, and I can't even get a measly $600 extra dollars in, in unemployment benefit, which I desperately need to pay my bills, and even with that, it's not enough money? You know, I've said many times that I think we... We're not going to have a revolution in this country, namely because we have so many amazing distractions. There's so many things that keep us occupied elsewhere. Whether it's Netflix, video games, all, you know, modern accoutrements. Like, those things really do prevent total social decay. Because we're so rigidly individualistic in this country that there's not much organizing. 
But having said that, man, is that theory really being tested now? Because if you're ever going to see some sort of real violent upheaval, we're already seeing some of it with the George Floyd protests, but that could be nothing compared to what's coming next. Go ahead, try to make it so that 50% of the country can't pay their bills, and then see how long the country lasts. See how long everything functions smoothly. Again, we're already seeing stuff not function smoothly because of the pandemic and because of the uh, civil unrest from the George Floyd protests. Boarded up stores, everything. So many people losing their jobs. It's going to get a hell of a lot worse if Washington doesn't get their act together right now and help the American people who desperately need it.